introduction video from the artist so i will take you through that one second Uh, Nidhi, the audio is not. Uh... Are you able to hear me, Nidhi? Uh, is it audible with now? No, no, it's not audible. One second. Okay. No, Nidhi, it's not audible. I think I'll just. <laughs> Go ahead with my introduction here. Yeah, so, sure. I think there's some glitch. Yeah. Uh, at some network, yeah. So, yeah. so uh, I'll welcome Vikra and she will directly introduce herself to everybody. So I no. hope uh, it's audible to uh, everyone. So hi, Vikra. How are you doing? Hi, Nidhi. I'm fine. Thank you so much for asking. Hi, everyone. A warm welcome to all of you. My name is Vikra and I'm a contemporary artist with Caterfly. I do regular workshops with Caterfly on a daily basis. And a warm welcome to all of you for today's session. Uh, we are going to paint uh, a beautiful uh, landscape uh, called as Two Boats by the artist Leonid Afremov. Uh, the artist Leonid Afremov, he is an Israeli artist. And uh, if you see all his paintings, all his paintings have uh, those typical square strokes. He works in palette knife. And the work of the artist is well distinguished from the other artists because you will find all the square kind of strokes in his painting. He does impressionism. Uh, he used to do impressionism, I would say. He passed away two years back. But uh, his work consists of like all colorful paintings, mostly landscapes. So his main forte was landscape. And uh, you've got beautiful paintings on the internet. You can just have a look at that. And out of that, we are going to do the two boats this time. Uh, so I'll be, without wasting any time, I'll be moving on to my screen so that we can start. I will also give you an introduction to the materials that I would be using. And then we'll start with the painting. We'll start with the layout of the painting and then moving on to creating the base and then creating all the strokes on the top. Okay. So let's move on to my screen. And if you have any questions, feel free to put down in the chat box. Uh, Nidhi and I will be happy to answer any queries. Since we have so many people in the group, uh, it will go with the chat box. And that's why we have uh, put all of you on mute at the moment. Okay. So let's start here. Uh, I am using an 8 by 12 inch canvas, as you can see. This is a fresh canvas, which comes with a frame. But if you're using a paper, uh, today, well, a thick paper should be fine. Or even a canvas roll is fine. Okay? Anything that you want to use today is totally okay. <clears throat> So we'll go with an eight by 12 inch canvas here. And one second. I will be um, starting with the layout here. For the layout, we'll work with the grid method. So I'll not be providing with you with any kind of measurements. Instead, we'll work with the grid so that everyone can make the sketch in the right way. We'll be keeping our canvas in a horizontal manner, not vertical. So it's like a long canvas and it will be kept like this. And we'll be working in this way here, horizontal manner. Now, what you need to do on your canvas is you have to make grid here. And I'll tell you how to work with the grid method if you've never worked. So this is the 12 inch size for us. What you need to do here is take your scale and your this part should be approximately 30 centimeters. Approximately, it is 30 centimeters. So what you'll do is from the corner of your canvas, you're going to mark a 10 centimeter mark. So mark a 10 centimeter at one point. 
on the canvas and then from this 10 centimeters mark another 10 centimeters okay so you see we've made two marks one at 10 centimeters another one at from here if you see it's 20 if you mark from here it's 10 so at 10 centimeter each so 10 centimeter from here 10 centimeter and then go from this mark to this mark 10 centimeter again so your horizontal part will be divided into three parts when you do this one two and three okay if you have any questions do let me know we have divided this into three parts this to this is 10 centimeters and this to this is 10 again okay now we'll go on the other side of the canvas which is the smaller size which is eight inches and on eight inches mark, so on the eight inches side, you're going to mark a point at 6.5 centimeter. So this is 6.5 centimeter. And then again, another 6.5 from this mark. So from here till here, it's 6.5. And then again, from here till here, it's 6.5 again. Okay. Any questions that you have till now? I hope this is clear enough. So we again, just repeating for those people who have just joined. 12 inches side, we're keeping the canvas horizontal. From this to this, it is 10 centimeter mark. And from this mark to this, again, 10 centimeters. Mm -hmm. On the smaller size, eight inches, we have this to this as 6.5 and from this to this as 6.5 again, okay? Now, what you need to do with this mark is you just need to make horizontal and vertical lines so that you get a grid on your canvas. Just make sure that since you're doing it on your own, you will have to make the lines quite light. I will be making them dark. Ideally, I should be making them light as well. But just to make it visible to all of you, I'm making it darker. But you need to make it as light as possible, okay? So we'll start with the lines. I'm making it dark so that it's visible to all of you. But you should make it as light as possible, okay? So that's my first line. That's my second line. The canvas is small, so we have just marked the points on one side. If it is a bigger canvas that we are working on, we will always mark it on both the sides so that our lines come out straight, okay? But since this is a small canvas, we don't need to do that. If you have a smaller canvas, what you can do is you, can, you just need to uh, find out how much measurement you need to make, give so that your canvas is divided into three equal parts. So you divide the length and the width of the canvas by three and then mark the points at those respective uh, measurements, okay? So even if you're using any other canvas, all you need to do is, any other size, all you need to do is divide the length and the width of your canvas by three, and that should give you three equal parts on your canvas, okay? Then again, from this side, we'll again just divide and we'll get a grid here. So like I said, I'm making it slightly darker. You need to make the lines as light as possible just so that it's visible to you. So that's our grid. We, uh, usually we will make more grids if it is a very, very detailed piece. Uh, this one does not need a very detailed a grid, like not a more number of grids because we can still fit in uh, whatever elements we have in this painting in a small number of grids so it is easy in this way uh, now how you need to follow the grid method i'll not be telling you any measurements you have the same kind of grid on your canvas now like i have now you need to follow where i am making this particular any particular element in the picture for example if i'm starting with the tree and i'm making the trunk in this particular grid you will also need to make it in that particular grid that's how you follow the grid method okay so wherever I'm making my lines, exactly there in that particular grid, you have to make your lines as well. And that way, all of our sketches will be similar. Okay. So let's move ahead. Uh, I will quickly give you an introduction to the materials that I am using today. And then you can let me know if you have any alternate materials and whether they'll be useful for you. So I'll be using the tube paints. Uh, so a camel acrylic or any tube paint that you have should be okay. However, if you're using bottled acrylics as well today, that's totally fine. Uh, usually for this kind of painting, tube acrylics give much better effect. But to start with, if you have bottle colors as well, that should be totally okay. So don't worry if you're using the bottled acrylics. I'm using a local company brand that I have from here. Uh, even if you're using like a camel or any other company, that's totally fine. Okay, so tube acrylics here. 
Apart from this, we'll simply just need few flat brushes and maybe some round brushes afterwards. So I'm just using simple flat brushes at the moment to start with. I'll keep telling you the sizes and you can use alternate size, whatever you have. So don't worry if you don't have that specific size that I have. Okay. Apart from this, you just need a bowl of water, a mixing palette. I'm just using a paper plate as a mixing palette. And uh, uh, you will need just a water and rough cloth. Okay, that's what you need. We'll start with the HB pencil only. We'll be doing the sketch with HB pencil. Make sure that you do the sketch light enough so that you are able to mask all the lines that you do. Okay. So let's start here. If you have any queries, just let me know. Arshia is saying that my video is not visible. Arshia, you will need to join again if the video is not visible. I hope the video is visible, Nidhi. So let's start, okay? So we'll first start making the place where the tree is really standing. So it's like a small space where the tree is there. So we'll just start in this particular grid, the last corner grid on the right side. And you will start from the corner of this grid. So exactly from the corner, I'm making it dark so that you can see. Just do make it very, very light. And you'll just leave it like this here. So exactly where I have made the line is the place where you will be making the line as well so that all our sketches are similar. So you have to see till where the line has gone. The line has not even gone to half of this grid, right? It is stopping just before the half part of this grid. So you have to do the same thing. And then the, there is a tree and there are two boats here. And then there is a tunnel over here, right here. So we'll start with the tunnel now. So after we have placed this, we'll start with the tunnel. So go towards the left side of your canvas. And almost from almost the center of this grid, almost the center of this grid, uh, make a line. You can use a scale if you want to. Okay, so that's your line. And through that line, see where I'm making the tunnel. So you have to leave space over here. And the tunnel is somewhere over here. Now see half the part of the tunnel is in this grid, half the part of the tunnel is in the other grid. So you just kind of follow this. So that's where our tunnel lies. And you will make the lines on the lower part of the tunnel as well. And you will close this as well. So that's where our tunnel is. Now, after we have made the tunnel, we will start placing the trunk of the trees and then we'll also start with our boat, okay? I would say let's make the tunnel slightly shorter because we'll, again, we'll be left with less space otherwise, okay? I'm so used to working on bigger canvases. Let's make it this much, just this much. Just move the line upwards, that's it. Okay. So that's our tunnel. You can ignore the lower line. The line is this upper line. And we'll work on the tree now. So when you work on the tree, you just need to go up from here and get a trunk downwards. So see where the trunk is. Another trunk just at the back side of this, but it's like straight coming downwards. I'm trying to darken it for you, but do make it light as light as possible, okay? And another trunk, which is literally joining this one. So we, you don't have to make the first line of the trunk. You will just make the second line of the trunk. 
and just get it downwards. Okay, so that's our first trunk. That's our second one. And that's the third one, which is literally joining this. That's why it, it is just three lines here instead of four. Now, there are sub branches to it as well, but we'll not be making the branches and the sub branches. This is the main trunk that we have made. And we just leave that part there because we don't want to make the branches right away. We'll be making that with our color. Okay. Now, after you have done that, you will need to make the boats. Where will we make the boats? So the first boat will lie in level two, this trunk where it's touching this area, okay? So you can erase this extra line if you have it on the trunk, erase the extra line there. If it is like slightly visible, that's totally okay because of course you won't be able to completely erase the lines on your canvas. It can be covered up with colors, but whatever you can erase, you can erase, okay? Now, let's start with the boat. So the boat has to be here. The boats will be smaller, okay? They'll not be very big. So we'll start with first boat here. You have to get the boats in perspective. So you have to make sure that you make it in the right direction. So do check the line how I'm making it. So in this box somewhere over here, I'm making a slanting line like this. So a slanting line and give me just one second. Just change my pencil here. So a slanting line and then a slanting line again going down is what you will need to make. So it is not a straight line that we are making. It's a slanting line that we are making. Which is kind of touching this part of the tree. You see where it's touching this area where the tree lies. Okay, it's a slanting line. And then this slanting line touches the tree here. And along with that, this line which we'll make is gonna again touch the same point where it's touching the tree there, okay? So you start from here and join it to this part like this. So a slanting line, another slanting line joining the tip here, the corner, and then again from this corner, it is joining to the same back part of the line. And then you get another slanting line down. It need not be a very long one. You don't have to make it long, just a short one, like a slanting and little curved, I would say. It's slightly curved, okay? And then it goes inside and kind of joins into this part here. Okay. And you will also make the inner part here. So you will just make a parallel line to this one. So just a parallel line. And then it goes inwards and joins to the same corner point. So these two lines are parallel to each other. And then this goes and joins to the same point. That's your first boat. And then we have our second boat, which is which is similar in the structure. So you already know what you need to do. Just do the placement here correctly. So we'll do the placement somewhere over here. So start from here again with a slanting line. If you see this line and this line should be almost parallel to each other. If we line to extend karne ki koshish kare, if we try to extend these two lines, they should be parallel to each other. Okay. So even this line and this line is parallel. So do make it in the same direction. And then this goes forward again into a slanting position. And then this goes forward too. Same how we made our first boat is how you're making the second boat as well. Now here, 
it wasn't clear because it is like the corner. So we just joined it to that point. Here, what you will do is you'll get it till almost here, slightly less than this line, and then join it upwards. That's the only difference in this boat and that boat. Okay. And then you will again make the inner part. So parallel line, parallel to this one, and then join it to the corner. I think we can wait for two minutes. Yeah. Meanwhile, yeah. sure. I will just tell like Vipra uh, works on different mediums uh, and uh, she's been doing uh, teaching participants with different um, mediums. Like one of the favorites is her uh, palette knife and brush uh, work. Then uh, we also picked up some pencil sketches in the uh, past workshops. Then she works with acrylics, she works with watercolors. So all these workshops are done on a regular basis every day from Monday to Thursday. And the timings for contemporary with our system, 7 to, 7 to uh, 7.30 to 9 p.m. in the evening. So our calendar is all set. I will take you through that in some time uh, once uh, Vipra completes the drawing, maybe then. So I hope you all are enjoying this session. You can put a yes in the chat box if you're liking it or raise your hands and let us know. Uh, so Nidhi, uh, I am done with the sketch here. Um, we will be just erasing the grid now. We Whatever grid we made, right? These grid lines needs to be erased. If you're not able to fully erase it and it's little bit visible, the graphite is there. It's totally fine because we can hide some part of it in our color. But maximum of it you should remove so that it doesn't interfere when we start with the coloring portion. So we'll erase the grid here. And maybe meanwhile, maybe you can just take them through the workshops. Yeah, that are sure. So just one minute, I think they can see and finish. And then I will take them to the upcoming workshops. And Absolutely. we are getting so many yes, people are liking the session with Ra and they're enjoying it also. That's so, great. Yeah. I'm glad. And I'm sure when the coloring part happens, they'll enjoy it more. So you can just see and complete it also. Uh, to tell you, like as I've been writing in the group since morning, like you can also, uh, you will have to download Google Classroom through Play Store, to which we will give the access to these with the recorded uh, session of this uh, particular class. So you will get to know how uh, Cadetta basically gets the access to recordings and how it goes. So basically these paid sessions, are, these free workshops are done to uh, showcase the artist's work and to let everybody know uh, what all can be done. And then maybe you can join us regular on the regular sessions as well. So if you can see the sketching part is mostly done, I will just take you to the upcoming workshop. I will just take two minutes of your time and I'm sure you love the upcoming workshop which we have planned for everybody. So as I told you, uh, if you can see my screen, I think it must be visible to everybody. This is the workshop we are starting from Monday. This is dance in the sky, birds in knife painting. So this will be done with brush and knife and uh, Vipra will be taking it up from the coming Monday uh, that is from uh, 6 June to 10. All the details are mentioned below the uh, this uh, particular workshop details are mentioned. Then we have this light direction in micron pens, which you can see it is done with micron pens and you can start from uh, 13 to 24 June. After this, I'm sure just hold your hearts to see the coming of workshop. This is first foliage by Antasya Tosobo. Uh, that's starting from 27 June to 1st July. And if you can see, this is a beautiful scenery of flowers and sunrise or sunset, I'm not sure. <laughs> and the trees. So uh, this is a one week workshop. After this, we have these two boards at uh, Blue House by Sally Barrow. So if you can see, this is another beautiful painting. Then we have this um, Joy Spring by Nikki Sandvarik. So this is one of the most liked workshop which many participants who are already with Cadify they are joining because it looks very beautiful and it's one week workshop. So if you want to try and do uh, join us for paid workshop, I think this is one of them. You should definitely try. Then we have this English summer cottage in watercolors from 25th July to 29th July. Then we have this evening at Green Lake by Michelle Courier. This will be from 1st August to 11th August. Then we have this Holy Trinity by Sonali Mohanty. So like this, the uh, it goes on. Touch of Greece by Mickey uh, Sankaric. 
and then this dot painting on MBA course. So I have we have this calendar all set for the coming uh, few months. I think till November. I'll share the link with you. Uh, to all the people I would like to offer uh, on this spot offer, like if you register for any of these workshops today or tomorrow, then uh, you can avail 20% individually off on any workshop that you select. It, so this offer is only for this group and it is only for today and tomorrow. So any workshop that you're interested to register amongst it, which I have shown to you, you can avail 20% off on the uh, published price. Like for this, if it is for 900, you can avail 20% off for 900 and it will cost you something close to 680 or 700 if I'm not wrong. So uh, likewise, so I'll share the link. You can have a look and then you can select and let me know. My number is there in the groups as well, Nidhi. And I will also share my number in the chat box. So that's it. I will, not, I will uh, again showcase it later. So me and I, let's start with the coloring part. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Nidhi. So beautiful workshops coming up. Do join. Um, I'm quite excited for these because these are beautiful paintings. Uh, we'll again get back to our work that we are doing. And uh, the so if you see, my lines are not completely disappeared because they've not completely disappeared. The reason is I did, I did it quite dark, uh, but that's okay. I have took, uh, taken off the excess graphite, which is there on the canvas, and that should not interfere with the coloring part when we start with uh, one thing to add on the sketch is you can completely take this line backwards. So the lower line of the tunnel completely just join it backwards over here. Okay. That's one thing that you can add. The rest, whatever details are there in the picture, we will be uh, co covering that up when we start with the coloring process. So our sketch is done. We'll now start with the coloring part here. And we'll be taking out a few colors. Uh, before we start, and I will keep telling you the alternative. So if you don't have any specific shade that I'm taking out, do feel free to put it down in the chat box and I will let you know what alternate shade you can use in that uh, in place of that one, okay? So uh, like I've said that I'm using tube paints over here. So the first color that we need to take out is a turquoise. So see the color that I have? That's the color that you need to take out. It is turquoise. If you don't have a turquoise shade, a cerulean blue can be taken out as well. So you can either take out cerulean blue. If you don't have cerulean blue as well, take out any blue that you have. Mix equal quantity of white into it. So you have to mix equal quantity of white into it and add yellow into it as well. So little yellow, almost like very little part of yellow. Just mix it and create your color. So either you use a turquoise or you use a cerulean blue or you will just take your blue that you have, any blue that you have, that's the last option, plus equal quantity of white, plus very little yellow into it, any cadmium yellow, lemon yellow, whichever you have, just mix it. I'll be turning this color slightly lighter. So then afterwards, once you have made your color, you can adjust the color by mixing more white if it is needed, okay? So that's the alternative for this. So first color is turquoise, second color is white that I'm going to use. So simple white, titanium white. Next color that I'm taking out is a viridian hue. However, if you do not have a viridian green or viridian hue, what you can do is you can take a sap green. So you, if you have a sap green, you can take that. I'm going to use a viridian green here. But if you have a sap green instead, you can take out sap green or any green that you have can be used here as well. Okay. Uh, because so, someone is asking for blue, can the teal blue be used? You can use a teal. Teal is quite close. Yeah, that is another option. So that thank you so much for asking. So that, that is another option from camel that you can use. Or you can also use an aqua green if you have. Okay. So this can be used as well in this case. So aqua green, teal blue or turquoise, or you can use the options that I have to put the cerulean blue, or you can use the one that I have asked you to mix and make if just in case you don't have any of them, okay? Anything can be used. For this, it's a very thin green, but you can use a sap green, that's totally fine, and I'll tell you what to do with it. And then we'll need a little bit of yellow. So I'm going to use a cadmium yellow, but you can use a lemon yellow if you don't have a cadmium yellow, or any bright shade of yellow that you have can be used whichever shade you have of the yellow just it needs to be little bright so this is what we are using at the moment, okay now white i'm just taking out little more but you don't need to completely take out right now you can take out slowly if you think your color is dry up faster 
okay for those people who are using two paints you can give slight texture to the painting and that will look really nice if you're using bottled acrylics that's totally fine if you go slightly flat on it because the bottled acrylics will anyways not give you texture uh the reason being that if you see this painting originally is a knife painting but we are recreating it in brush so we do want to add a little bit of texture i would be adding a little bit of texture because my paints are quite thick right so we'll start with a medium sized flat brush you can take anything between 6 to 10 a uh, flat brush anything which is ranging between number 6 to 10 this is number 12 but it is small as compared to what you normally get in 12 it is a dailer and rowney brush but if i fit it into this grid see what is the size of the brush right so according to the grid if you see the size it's quite small for 12 but it says number 12 so so all the name of the colors which i took uh, so first color that i took is turquoise second is white third is viridian green and the fourth is cadmium yellow that's what i have used okay now the first thing that we'll start here is take water little bit of water on your brush so don't take too much of water just as just wet brush so that you can mix your colors well so it should not the water should not drip down your brush okay so dip your brush in water this brush is a uh, this brush is a dailer and rowney brand of brush um uh, but it's i have used it quite a bit so it is a very old brush that i am using nothing special about this brush i'm going to take this turquoise here take it on one side and add little bit of um green into it so just this green on the corner of the brush see i've taken little green on the corner of the brush and i am going to mix it into this and you have to mix a good amount of white so take white mix it mix it well and take more if needed so you have to adjust the color by mixing white and it should look similar to what it looks for me okay something similar uh and i did miss on one more color you can take out very little black on your palette as well okay so do take out little black now you need to mix little black into this but you have to make sure that black is very very less because agar aapne thoda bhi zyada black liya it will mess up with your color okay so you have to take the black just on the corner and take less and then increase if needed but don't take black all at once because you might change the color into a very dark shade so on the corner of the brush see how less i have taken see the color black it is very very less just like on the tip of the brush corner and just mix it see how dark it makes the color uh, anyways right so you have to take very very less black agar aapka color dark ho gaya hai to again just make the same shade and then again work on it but initially you should always take very less black and then work over it again i'm going to take some more white and little more black into it so again i'll take it on the corner and then add it so this is the color that we have achieved as you can see that's the kind of shade we need okay this is the kind of shade you need what we'll do is we will be painting on the background but in combination to this color we'll be also adding white from time to time okay you also do need to keep a tissue with you so that you can tissue or cloth anything so that you can keep cleaning your uh, brush when i tell you to okay i'll just grab a tissue meanwhile you are uh, creating the color over here i'll just be back okay thank you so much anamika i am glad that you all are enjoying the session and you are understanding do feel free to add your uh, questions in the chat box just in case you have any confusions i'll clarify that for you now if this color is over for you just in case you have to make it exactly the same way okay we'll start from the top corner 
and we'll start the strokes in a crisscross manner as if you're creating crosses with that okay as if you're creating like crisscross now since it is a small canvas make sure that you're not filling up the space too much very soon you create smaller crisscross so that you have bigger space still left to cover up the space so i'm starting from the top here and from the top, I'm going to take my brush and I'll give you a closer look now to this particular space. And I'll start with little crisscross stroke. So movement is like this, crisscross. Okay, and try to take thick color. Don't add too much of water into your paint. So if you see crisscross I've taken immediately without wasting any time before that dries up, take little white on the same brush. You don't have to clean or wash your brush. On the same brush, you have to take your white and again create crisscross and go over that color that you have placed. Okay. Uh, yeah. Can you just explain once again like how that blue was made? Okay, so we've we've mixed a uh, turquoise, a white and a little bit of viridian green and uh, um, a little black into it like a dot of black into it and we've made that color so i'm finding this brush at the moment uh, i will switch to a smaller brush because we don't want to cover up this space so do take a smaller brush and use that one okay so if you have a smaller brush, go for this. I'm taking a number three brush now. This is again a Daler and Brownie number three. And pick up this color again. And again, just create crisscross strokes. And with this, you take some white. Keep taking white and keep adding it randomly. Don't hesitate to go on the existing color, the one that you are placing, okay? So... If you see, I'm just using crisscross strokes to create the effect that is there. And from time to time, I will also take the shade that we have prepared and I will mix it into the area where I'm also adding the white. Now, if you see, this is a tube paint, so I'm, I am creating some kind of texture here. Take a closer look. There is some kind of texture that is coming on my canvas because I'm taking thicker colors, okay? So you can also do that if you're using tube colors specifically. And what we'll do is we'll try and keep this area slightly more lighter. So we'll still take more white. Wherever you see it's coming out light for me, that means I'm taking more white. And wherever you see it's darker, that means I'm taking the darker color that we have prepared, okay? So just, you see, I'm just doing crisscross. And the advantage of taking thick color will also be that you're able to mask all your pencil lines on your canvas right so just go ahead and just create crisscross strokes don't hesitate to go from one color to the other both the colors are quite complementary and they'll mix up very nicely so you can simply just go on mixing and create the effect that we need to create over here so what i'm doing is i'm going on the right side completely on this side of the canvas and just creating the same effect then we'll come down and create the effect that we need to, okay? So we're going from left to right right now. We are working in portions. As you know, the acrylics would dry up very fast. So that's why it is important that you work on portions so that it doesn't dry up at the place where you need to blend your colors. So crisscross, you can go quite quick on this. And you see, I'm just randomly creating the effect. I'm not much worried on the mixing of colors because the colors really go very well with each other. So if you see there's a little different color that's coming because the turquoise kind of was not mixed, which is totally okay. So you don't need to have that fear in your mind. Just go ahead with your crisscross work here. So we are trying to create the background here, as you can see, and we've come from background to foreground and we create the effect that we will need here, okay? So my color is over on this part, the darker one. So I'm going to prepare it once again. For those who have missed, just have a look how I'm preparing it. So I'm taking turquoise. 
This time I'll take a little more because we're going to need this color in more quantity. It's okay if it is slightly different. We are not doing any portrait or anything that we need to kind of be precise. We can slightly create a different color or anyways, whenever you create different batches, the color comes out different. But that's totally fine because it's just a landscape. It can have slightly different effect on the background um, and it won't make much of a difference for us. So this and then some black mix it and then add some white into it so i'm just going to take out some white and i will add it so continue continue uh, if you are done with this and you still have the color you can completely go till the right side of the picture This looks fine to me and I'm still going to continue here. And along with that, I will still continue mixing my white. If you see the color looks slightly darker, but that's, that's totally okay. Like I said, it's a landscape, so we can go with a slightly different color just in case if it's over and we make it again, okay? So as you can see i'm not afraid of going with the white on that color because it mixes quite well like i said and just just continue um you can create random effect over here so i think that is also giving a look of clouds and these absolutely yeah yeah so uh, this is this is similar to how afremo would create his work uh with palette knife and if you see it's like an impression of the clouds not exactly like um we are not specifically like showing that this that is cloud but it still looks like clouds and that's what the uh work of aframov also shows a uh, little impressionist work and with those impressions he create the creates the effect of those specific things uh of the elements of nature uh so that's the beauty of his paintings and his strokes are quite evident that these are Afremov strokes. You cannot confuse his work with any other artist. So it's it's absolutely beautiful. It's a kind of an abstract effect. That's right, maybe. Okay, so in this part, anyways, this part will be completely covered up. So I'm not going much lower on this area. I will just leave it on this grid where it's ending. And I'm not going to go downwards because it will have a different effect over here, okay? So just end the color in this grid over here. What I'll do is I'll wait here for all of you, uh, for you to be able to finish this portion, and then we'll go ahead together, okay? It's not that you cannot go on a specific part or revisit any area, just make sure that when you're revisiting, you're doing both the colors because if that color on the base has dried up, it will not mix up and it will uh, show separately. So make sure that you use both the colors if you want to create a specific effect. Now, if you see in this part, I'll give you a closer look. See the texture that is being created because I'm taking thick, thick color on my brush. Okay, so that's why it's getting the, that texture. So if you want to get the texture on your canvas, you just have to make sure that you are, um, taking more amount of color. Vipra, before you go forward, I would just like to show you mm -hmm. the work which you have done uh, in the new melody by Afro. So just yeah, one sure. second. Um, yeah. I'll show them. We took this uh, workshop in the past. And if you can see, this was a reference, a reference image by Afro. That was new melody of the night. That's a reference image from internet. But I'll show you what Vipra has created. Uh, if you can see, this is done by Vipra and she put this uh, workshop in uh, during the Valentine Day and it was titled as the new melody of night. That was a special workshop we took in uh, brush and knife painting and this work, this is completed and made by Vipra uh, herself. So uh, she's very good at brush and knife painting and you must have seen she's very good at teaching as well. So I would really recommend all those who are uh, like learning and want to uh, join and start at coloring with uh, different mediums. You should uh, definitely join one of our workshops to experience because because the live workshops are uh, like um, uh, the regular workshops. They are more 
Uh, I mean, communicate. You can communicate. You can talk to the artists. Here we have to keep the participants new because the number of people are more. But in the regular workshops, the people are less. You can communicate. You can take feedback on the daily basis on your work on progress. You can interact with the artists. There are moderators also in other workshops who can teach and guide you as well. So that's a properly different way. how we go ahead but uh, uh, so these are the coming workshops i, I have already uh, shown you so uh, that's highly recommendable if you can join one or two and just experience how our regular workshops go okay so over to you dipna thank you nidhi okay so should we move ahead uh, if everyone is done i'm just hoping that everyone is doing well and it's working out for you so if you're done on this side we'll move on to the left side again and if you see we have left some space on this side as of now it's because we want to add a little bit of continuity so mishti i think you're asking i have sky blue which uh, which is another color so uh, you in sky blue you can mix little yellow and little black mishti and then use that color for your darker color and then use white along with that okay so we we'll work rework on this space now but if you see when you started over here this might have now dried up so you cannot directly start working uh, with a darker color on this this might have dried up you can wash your brush after you are done with the the end point and clean it on a tissue it should just remain wet little little wet like a damp brush but don't completely dip it in water okay so what, when you wash you just clean it on a cloth or a tissue and then keep it ready now what you need to do is because this has dried up we need to add a continuity to this and to add that continuity we will take some white first so take some white and add it right where you have stopped okay so add it right where you have stopped so i'm just adding it below where i have stopped and then i'll take my darker color little bit you don't have to take too much of it add it mix and go upwards and downwards so you have to go up and down up and down so this area became active now once you did this you went up and down up and down and this is now wet so we've put white we've taken the darker color and then we just went up and down and it kind of added this little continuity and then we'll take our darker color again so continue with your dark color now and then start mixing it upwards with that wet color so you're taking the darker color and you're trying to mix it with the color upwards that you have activated just now so you see i am trying to create a slightly darker effect in this part This is slightly darker than normal, and then I'll pick up little bit of this green now. I'm not cleaning my brush with the same brush. I am picking up this green, and I will add it here, and I'll try to mix it upwards, and I'll take very little, very very little of black, and I'll go on this green, and I'll add it on the green. It has to be very little black. and you'll still take some green and see where i'm stopping on this part okay so see where i'm stopping i'm not going completely till here and then where you have to go up with very light pressure so you don't have to apply too much of pressure when you go up just with very light hands as if you're just touching the brush there you go up so we take we took green we took little black we went up into that wet color and then we'll take again the same color that we prepared and we'll move it little bit on that green so that it becomes softer it need not be a very dark effect so it will become slightly softer with this and it will all mix up it creates a darker effect there yet it is soft enough and not very very dark you have to do all this while the color the base color is still wet only then it will mix if it if you go slow and it dries up it will not let you have the same effect over there okay 
So again, if your color is, so you can wash your brush after this part because your brush will have green in it. We don't want more green at the moment. And if your color is over this one, you can again make the color over here, okay? So meanwhile, you're working, I'll still prepare the same color because we'll need that color more right now. You can use a viridian green or if you don't have a viridian green, a sap green can be used in combination with the blue. So you can take sap green and just add a little blue if required. Or you can simply use a sap green also. It will be slightly different in uh, look, but it will still look nice. So you can use a sap green instead if you want. Just in case if you don't have the viridian. I'm still preparing the same color that we prepared initially. Okay, so my color is ready again. And I'm not taking too much of water all the time. If even if I like I feel little resistance on my brush, only then I take very little just so that my brush moves smoothly. But otherwise, the quantity of water is very, very less. Now, again, once we reach this part, we'll go ahead and we'll again start mixing. Uh, the white into it. And this time we also have to mix little yellow. So we've taken out yellow, but we've not used it. We'll now use it in this part. So again, what you need to do, again, this part is dry. So you need to repeat the same process of activating. So just clean your brush on a cloth, pick up some white and go on this part, add white, same like that we did in this part too. So add white. and add little bit of that same color, the blue that we have prepared, and then again, go up and down, up and down, so that it mixes up and adds little continuity. And then you just start again with the same thing, just add white, just add the same color, the blue, and then add more white. You need to mix it on the left side also into this green part. How will you mix that? You will simply take the same color, add it, just move it a bit on the green area. And if it is showing separately, just in case, if it shows up separately, you can take very little of that green to create a slight mix. So take very little of the green and add it where it's showing separately so that it blends. So take very little of that green and move towards the right. That's how you create that blended effect and it mixes and then you can continue. Okay. So that's how the color mixes. Now, when you reach here, you will also start mixing a bit of the yellow. So take very little yellow on the same brush, no washing of the brush. Start mixing the yellow and move towards the left and then come back towards the right for a slight yellowish touch. So there, the yellowish touch is not too much at the moment. As you can see, I'm still using the same color along with the white. And the touch of yellow is quite less at the moment, but it is still there. So I've taken very little and I've just added it over there. I'll give you a closer look. See the touch of yellow there? Very little yellow, right? It's mixing up. We'll also take little green as well in this part for slightly darker touch on the lower part. Little green. And still mix it. 
as you are using the crisscross strokes it will mix by itself you don't have to apply too much efforts in mixing your colors over here so little green also i have mixed here as you can see and then i'll still continue with the same process of the two colors that we've been doing okay so still same colors white and this one and you still have to create that mixing effect so jahan pe bhi mix nahi ho raha add little white there and it will mix up and continue continue till the end of this till the level of the tree so the, till the level of the first tree okay so here on the left side of the tree you will stop once you reach here then we'll go ahead on this part with slightly different touch okay so keep it light in front of the tree you can add more white here and keep it slightly light if you have any doubts do ask in the chat box so if you see i'm just adding white from the top and it's turning lighter for us this way okay so if you see as a whole slightly darker effect here overall it's a light effect towards the top in combination with the blues there's a slight yellow touch and a green touch over here and here it's slightly lighter now what you need to do is continue on this part but you have to add more yellow this time and more yellow and more white and very little of this uh, blue color that we have made so you'll still continue with the blue first just add little blue towards the top but as you move down do add little white to mix it upwards of course like we are being we are doing from that side as well so little white to go with and now you take yellow so take more yellow this time see how i am adding the yellow so it's more yellowish in this part but we have to make it subtle otherwise it will not look nice it's it's looking separate at the moment as you can see in order to make it subtle you will make you make use of your white so you'll still use white we are not washing the brush anywhere we are just simply uh mixing all the colors we're letting the colors mix So there is a question from uh, Anamika. If you can answer that. Uh, so if your paint is dry, especially with acrylics, Anamika, uh, you you cannot activate the paint. Once it is dry, it is dry. So that paint is like it it is uh, wasted. So uh, a way to work around this will be uh, if you think your paints dry up faster, you just take. the uh, little quantity and then go on increasing the quantity when it's needed another way of uh, using the acrylics slowly would be making use of the mediums and the additives that you get uh, which is of course a, like a very detailed part of it but in short if you want to just keep your paint active for a long time you can use when you take out the paint at the same time you use some retarder with the paint so there is an there is an additive that comes which is called as the retarder and you can use that along with your paint so that your paint remains active for a long long time so that's one way of working but if it has already dried up you cannot reactivate your paint now okay so i hope that answers your question i'm also applying some yellow on this part too if you see just on this part the my brush still has that blue so it's kind of mixing up forming a light greenish effect with with the yellow so that's why it's not necessary that you should be washing your brush all the time it it does not create a natural effect if you keep washing your brush so it's not important to always keep washing your brush when you use different colors okay 
so that kind of completes the upper part for us okay most of the background part done for us do let me know once you are done nidhi i'll be taking a stop for 2 minutes at this part if you want to take over just in case thank you vipra uh, just to take everyone once again to the coming workshop for those who have just missed uh, this is the right time so that when the color is drying up so as i was telling you we have different uh, workshops which are scheduled in the coming uh, sessions so the first one in the row is this dance and the sky birds and knife painting this is a brush and knife painting so uh, brush and knife is a very good combination which gives a different a different effect so this is one of the uh, painting which you can start with it is smaller in size it's a one week workshop so i was just telling contemporary with us is from 7:30 to 9 pm and this will be from 6 to 10 june so this is from coming monday and it will go up to uh, a thursday a friday i'm sorry so after this we have this right direction micro pens this is a complete workshop with micro pens in which this beautiful uh, view and uh, it will be taught by vipna then after this we have this uh, calendar set till november if you can see this is uh, first toilet then uh, this is starting from 27th of june and will go to 1st july so it's again one week workshop time will remain same then we have these two boats at blue house so this is from 4 july to 15 july two week workshop similarly we have joy of spring which is one week workshop if you can see this is a beautiful uh, uh, scenery of a bird feeding uh, for kids then after this we have this english summer cottage and watercolors so if somebody is fond of using watercolors join this workshop it is a one week workshop and you will be able to make this beautiful uh, creation by yourself with the help of vipra after this we have this evening at dream lake by michelle kunyo so this is two week workshop after this we have this holy trinity by sonali mohanty this is a different type of painting which represents the holy trinity ganesh Uh, Mahadev and uh, Parvati. Then we have this touch of Greece by Nikki Selterik. This is a beautiful scenery from Greece. Then we have this dot painting MDF 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 box, uh, which you can create and use at your home also. Your self-made boxes. Then we have this image by Avantika. If you can see, it's a beautiful lady which is covered with a mask, and we, this is a two-day workshop. After this, we have this 3D mandala by Bays Bernal. This is, if you can see, it's a two-week workshop. After this, we have this dangerous zone by. Um, so this is the last in the room. No, I, I'm sorry. We have this with a bit by uh, Varsha Karanpal also. Then we have this bridges by Amsterdam, uh, which is a uh, creation by FMO, which you are uh, the device teaching right now. This is a beautiful painting, one of the uh, beautiful paintings. Like I was showing you the new melody of night, new melody of night. Yeah, so this is the coming of workshops. I have shared the link in the group and in the chat box itself. You can select and uh, register. As I was telling, there is an on the spot offer exclusive for this group. Two day offer. If you register today or to or tomorrow, you can avail twenty percent off on the individual price, which is mentioned below all these screens, and you can avail the offer. So I, you can. Uh, directly coordinate and uh, like register with me. My number is there in the group as well, and I have shared in the chat box also. So that's all from my side. Okay, Vipra, over to you. Thank you so much, Nidhi. Okay, so meanwhile, uh, Nidhi was telling about the workshops. We have this drying up over here. Now, what we need to do after this part is we need to still use our same color. and we need to work over the bridge the bridge should be lighter so basically the amount of white that we would be using on the bridge over here uh, will be slightly lighter as compared to the top colors that you you've used so it should stand out from the rest of the portion okay otherwise it will all mix up so what we'll do is in order to make it stand out we'll take white first so just wash your brush clean it on a cloth and pick up more white on your brush first and with your white just go on the bridge and just add like a thick layer of white on it again it will be still criss cross effect 
it's a very small one so you can take a small brush just in case if you think that you know it might just go here and there so use a smaller brush if needed and just add like a thick crisscross layer of white on this area completely fill it up and before that dries up on the same brush you pick up your blue that we have made and take little don't take too much and start mixing it up with that white little bit so what's happening is it still kind of mixes up with the white and creates a lighter shade plus it kind of stands out from the rest of the work that you have done okay now what's happening on the left side it's right now not mixing up we need to mix it up otherwise it's looking quite weird on that part and i'll tell you how to mix it up once we are done with this portion don't worry about the outline of the bridge just in case if it is slightly uh, rough we can add that in the finishing touch that we will give to the picture so now when you mix this it has become slightly like a light blue color on the bridge on this side you're going to mix it with the yellow so once you reach this end you can simply just take yellow on your brush and slightly get the yellow forward so that it gives a slight mixed up effect so here you have mixed it with the yellow and it's mixing up with the background right similarly what will you do on the other side you will simply just take green to mix it up on the left side so if you think your color dries up faster you quickly take green and with the green try mixing it up slightly like this keep cleaning your brush if it is over mixing so see now i've put the green i'll just clean my brush on the tissue and again try to blend so when i clean my brush it doesn't let the color to over mix creating an undesirable effect so if you see now the color is not over mixing and it's letting the color blend so cleaning is important over here and it blends the bridge over there right so you see it has now nicely blended into the background for me and the bridge is still visible okay so from the right side you have mixed yellow so that it becomes a part of the background from the left side you have mixed green and just to avoid any over mixing you are cleaning your brush and then you are moving it in criss cross motion so that it all becomes a part of the whole thing if you think just in case that the bridge is not standing out you can add little more white from the top so there is no issue in doing that you can still add more white from the top if that's needed okay so you see i'm still lightening the bridge over here and it's standing out from the rest the upper line we will work on it in the finishing touch so don't worry if it has gone slightly haywire like this right so the the bridge is not completely white it does have a touch of blue in it and it is lighter than the background okay So it has mixed up and it becomes a part of the background for us and one thing that you need to do on the right side which will be quite random have a look and then you can continue is you still work with the blue on the right so slightly start with the same blue that we've prepared in order to mix it upwards you will start you will add little white so that it becomes a part of the background and gets activated as soon as it is activated on this part you will come down with the blue 
and start mixing the green that you're left with. So whatever green you're left with on your palette, just utilize it over here to create a dark effect. So just mix, mix, mix in that wet color upwards. Again, when you want to mix these two colors, see, there are two different shades over here and it's kind of not mixing up. In order to mix that up, clean your brush on a tissue again and then just go ahead with that dry kind of brush with very light pressure on your brush to blend it and it kind of magically blends on that part, right? And then come down again, come down with the green and add little bit of black as well with your green to create a much darker touch. But again, black has to be used in less quantity. You still have to use a lesser quantity of black and you can mix like little yellow as well in this part. So it's a mix of black, green, and yellow in this part. So take yellow and mix it crisscross, just crisscross. So you don't need to worry on the placement. You can just do random placement of color over here. You don't need to exactly get the same effect as mine. Uh, it's totally fine if you're getting a slightly different touch to this area because this area is quite dark anyways. And there's not a lot of focus to this area, but you have to just make sure that you're creating a slightly lighter touch in uh, sorry darker touch in this area and as compared to the other sides that we have worked on so if it's not mixing up just in case add more white and then add little more blue and that should mix up for you okay so you see this area is as compared to the rest is slightly darker When you use black, do clean your brush. You can even wash it if you think the black is going to mix for you so that it doesn't over mix towards the top. Okay. So you see this part now, it's quite dark. It's the darkest part on the whole picture. Okay. If you see, this is the darkest part on the whole picture. So the background is kind of turning up quite well and uh, over this background we are going to get the tree and uh, we'll be also working on the wall. We'll just work right now and wait here for you to finish this part and then we'll work on the lower part here. This is again a mix of same colors that we already have on our palette. So it won't be taking much time. Okay, bye. Uh, so Rupa, we can just do this one and then we can see the work and then wind up for you. Yeah, sure. yeah. We we'll complete this part, Nidhi, and uh, then probably we can see everyone's work. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, another thing uh, before uh, we go ahead on this one and we complete today's session is I have a homework for you, and it's not too much. Uh, you will just take probably uh, fifteen minutes to do that. Uh, you should be ready when you come uh, tomorrow for that uh, for the next session uh, is you need to just completely till whatever space we see the tree right till here till this level almost you should add black to all the three trunks before you come tomorrow so you just have to paint it simply plain black uh, of course these two are kind of joining together right so you can simply just paint it black completely, even if they mix up together, we can create the division later on with our colors, the lighter colors, okay? So your homework is to completely fill this trunk, these two trunks in black till this level. So completely fill it in black and you can be ready when you come tomorrow. So that's your homework to do, okay? So next part that we just need to do and we'll finish the session after that will be the lower uh, color of the tunnel, uh, which is the inner part of the tunnel where from where the tunnel like passes. 
uh, we'll be taking our viridian green. So take the same green that you have. If you don't have a viridian, just take a sap green. Mix little Prussian blue into it if you don't have a viridian green, okay? So if you don't have a viridian green, you're taking sap green and you're mixing little Prussian blue into it. It will give you a similar shade when you do that, okay? So similar kind of shade you will get. So take, take that or if you have a viridian, for those who have a viridian, can simply take this viridian here on one side. Take black into it and mix it to make a darker color like a hooker's green. We're making quite a dark green. Of course, it should not completely turn black, okay? So it should still have that greenish touch. So mix the black accordingly. And mix a little bit of the same blue into it. Mix a little more green and black if needed to make it to the right, get, it, get the right color there. Okay, so that's the kind of shade you need. If you see, take a closer look. So you're mixing black and green and you're mixing the same blue. If you don't have the viridian green, you're mixing sap green plus viridian, uh, sap green plus Prussian blue plus black plus little bit of this. Okay, so for those who are using a sap green, you're mixing sap green plus Prussian blue plus black and this blue. For those who are using a viridian green, you're mixing viridian green plus this blue plus black. Take little water in this one so that your brush moves smoothly. It's a smaller space. Use a round brush for this. I'm using round brush number three. You can use a even smaller round brush if you think that three is bigger for you. Okay, so choose your brush according to your convenience. Go on this portion. Add this color. First, you can outline. Fill it after you outline. Fill it up completely. Fill like plain color as if you're filling just plain color over here. Adjust the shape if needed. And once you have filled this, take your Prussian blue or any dark, dark blue that you have, okay? So take your Prussian blue or any dark blue. So I'm taking very little Prussian blue. You don't need to take out a big quantity. We need very less of that. So Prussian blue. Once you fill this, Completely fill this, clean your brush, like wash your brush and clean it on a tissue or cloth to take off the excess of water. So same technique, uh, not exactly same, I would say, Namika. The technique will be slightly different with watercolors because watercolors is a totally different medium altogether. So definitely you'll have to use a different technique for this, but it can still be done in watercolors as well, okay? So different mediums, we can literally like, um, we can uh, experiment and it, this can be done in watercolors, but a different technique altogether. So we've done this color while this is still wet, Poster colors, no, because with poster colors, if you see, you don't really get a mix, nice mixing, mixing effect. It gives muddy colors when you start mixing your poster colors. So poster colors are much better uh, to work with when you're doing like more of like plain filling of colors instead of a very shaded effect. So if you see here, we have a lot of shaded effect. So I won't prefer uh, using poster colors in this. So what I'm doing here, everyone, is I'm adding some Prussian blue dark blue on the edge and I'm just trying to mix it inwards to create a shaded effect. 
and this is also adding little depth to it, it. So if you just take a closer look, see that's where I'm adding the Prussian blue. And in combination to Prussian blue, I will also take little black here and there. So like I have added Prussian blue and I'll take little black now without washing the brush and maybe add some black to add the depth upwards. So I'm adding more depth upwards. That upper portion will, will receive the least amount of light, right? Because it's the inner portion. So that's why it's much darker as compared to the lower portion. That's the reason why we are making it darker towards the top. And you have to do it randomly. You can even do crisscross strokes with this one too. And just try to mix it up with the greenish shade that we've given downwards, okay? If it doesn't mix and your green has dried up, you can take more green from the base like this and mix it upwards. Clean your brush when you do that uh, on a tissue and then take more green like this and this, just take it upwards into that darker color to mix it up if it has not mixed up really well. So I'll give you a closer look since it is looking quite dark in the video. See, that's how this is looking now. And you need to kind of blend it with that green downwards. So it should blend with the green here. So you should take green if it is not mixing up and go upwards to blend this. So right now it's like wet and it's kind of shining, but I hope you're able to see that depth that is there on the top part, okay? So that kind of finishes this part and you can take a full look of this how it looks right now. And then I will just have a look at, if you want to show your work, we'll just have a look at that. And then we'll wrap up today's session. So you can uh, show your work and you can also 